really hope we don't just recycle decade-old debunked arguments by cherry-picking a few verses out of context. So in the debate regarding the Quran's affirmation of the Torah and the Gospel, a third Muslim apologist has decided to weigh in, leading us to ask the question, how many Muslim apologists does it take to find some way out of the Quran's clear affirmation of the Torah and the Gospel? Apparently more than three, since Arazafar also fails to make any headway for Islam on this topic. But let's see what he has to say. I was unaware Rumsey has already tackled this objection on his page. It's literally refuted by just understanding the context of the revelation of the verse. Yesterday, I put up a video responding to Rumsey and explaining how the context of the revelation of this verse does not help his argument whatsoever. So Arazafar has made no headway on this topic here as he is just punting to an argument I've already refuted. Sure, if you want to completely ignore how the Quran defines those terms and superimpose your own baseless doctrine onto the text that does not teach it. I want to pause here because this is a hilarious accusation. When we look at the historical record, we see that there is a collection of texts that has been commonly referred to as the Torah for thousands of years. And this collection of texts has specifically been used and connected with the Jewish community for thousands of years. Muhammad is speaking to a Jewish community and refers to the Torah which we know how they would have understood that word. The clear understanding of Muhammad's use of Torah is that he is referring to the religious text that has been known as the Torah for thousands of years. And all of his Jewish listeners would have understood what he was referring to. Yet it is Arazafar and these other Muslims who instead want us to believe that what Muhammad was really referring to was some other collection of text, also known as the Torah. And it just happens to be the case that through thousands of years of textual history, they conveniently have no evidence of this other Torah existing. Yet they turn around and accuse me of superimposing my baseless doctrine onto the text. You would rather in Invent a completely imaginary set of texts, then just recognize that when Muhammad said the Torah here, that he was using it in the same way that everybody else was using it. So by all means, accuse me of superimposing my beliefs on the text. This is clearly just projection on your part. The Quran uses the term Injil in Torah. Its aim is to refer to the original revelations sent to Moses and sent to Jesus. As I have pointed out in my previous videos, the fact that Muhammad is repeatedly chastising the Jews and Christians for not standing on this revelation implies it was still in existence in their day. If somebody told a group of Jews to stand on the Torah or a group of Christians to stand on the gospel, they would understand that as referring to the text they already had and regarded as Torah and Gospel. Therefore, if the Injil is what was sent to Jesus, it then follows that a collection of four anonymous and inconsistent biographies about Jesus is not the Injil. There are several issues you are not considering. First, early in Christian history, the four Gospels begin to be referenced as the Gospel in the singular. The Gospels of the New Testament were referred to as the fourfold Gospel. Second, it seems plausible that whoever wrote and compiled the Quran was just historically ignorant of the nuances of the Gospel. and only only knew of them through his passing encounters with Christians in his day. So he mistakenly thought it was something delivered specifically to Jesus. The fact that the Quran displays a misunderstanding of what the gospel is doesn't support your point here. It actually hurts it. Second possibility, which I think is more charitable to Muslims than the last one, is that Muhammad is referring to the gospel message which was proclaimed by Jesus and recorded in the text known as the gospels. Under this understanding, Muhammad is telling the Christians to stand on Christ's message. Message. This is completely consistent with Muhammad believing that Christians had access to that message in the New Testament. And again, considering that Muhammad is telling Christians to stand on the gospel and that Christians considered the gospel to be the message conveyed in the New Testament, the most parsimonious, non-ad hoc reading is that Muhammad is affirming the text they have. So coming back to chapter 5 verse 68, given the fact we see clear evidence of the Quran teaching textual corruption, how do we understand this? There is no evidence that the Quran teaches textual corruption of the Torah that the Jews were using or the New Testament text that Christians were using. The distortion or corruption mentioned earlier in chapter 5 clearly indicates that the, the distortion was through taking verses out of context, which affected their meaning, not simply rewriting passages and passing them off as the original. The other verses that Muslims try to use to argue for the corruption of the Bible is Surah 279. However, that verse also does not say anything about the corruption of the text of the Torah or the gospel. And if you want to try and use that in your argument, go for it. I will happily slap down that argument too. The idea that the Quran affirms the textual corruption of the Torah or gospel is a later development in 
Islamic theology that is read back into the Quran because of theological issues. Well, you read the next sentence, which says you stand fast upon all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Which implies they had the revelation available to them. The Quran, in addition to teaching the previous scripture to be corrupt, also claims to be a guardian over the previous scriptures and claims to present the same teachings as Moses and Jesus by confirming the Torah and the Injil. As I mentioned in my previous video response to Ramzi, various Quran verses say that the Quran is supposed to reform the Gospel and the Torah that is between their hands, that is confirm what they already have with them. We know what the Torah and Gospel between their hands look like. The fact that the Quran claims to teach the same message as the Torah and Gospel is just further evidence of how ignorant the Quran's author was of the Torah and the Gospel. When one reads the full context of this passage from verse 40 to verse 70, it's very clear what is being said here. Oh, I agree, it's quite clear. And nowhere in this passage does it give a universal approval of the scriptures extant with the Jews and the Christians. That is explicitly what it does. And if it is really the case that this verse does not give approval to the text they had, then your prophet and Allah need to go back to freshman intro to communications class because they are apparently incompetent at conveying basic ideas. In the Quran itself, in multiple places, claims that it is a guide that all mankind must follow. This would not be the case if the author of the Quran also thought that the Jews and the Christians must follow and uphold and judge by the scriptures extant with them. You are once again affirming that the Quran's author properly understood what the extant text of the Jews and Christians had to say. It seems pretty clear that the Quran affirms the extant text that they have between their hands, which means we should simply conclude that the author of the Quran was an ignorant savage who did not know what he was talking about. Not that he was referring to some mysterious unknown Torah that has no evidence in our historical record. Christians, please stop regurgitating this debunked Sam Shamoon nonsense that you see online. You can slam your head against the wall and scream that you have debunked this argument all you want. You haven't. Your prophet clearly affirms what the Jews and Christians had with them. And the fact that he thought the Quran was consistent with that doesn't mean we should reinterpret this passage in which he affirms the Torah and Jill in some ad hoc way. It means we should recognize that the author of the Quran was an extremely confused person.